One of the most fun things in World of Warcraft is competing against yourself or against other people. And one of the ways we do that is by trying to increase our parses. So the time is finally here to release the Ulduar parse guide for Death Knights. Usually I do this spec specific, but today we're actually gonna talk about Frost and Unholy DKs. And shout out to my boy Fonzis who actually helped me with the script for this one. I'm gonna answer all the questions you have about how to min max these raids and pump even harder. We'll go through every single fight as well as specs, consumables, little tactics, or anything you can do to increase your damage, which of course increases your parse. And just like Death Knights are the hero class in WoW, you can become your own hero in another game which happens to be the sponsor of today's video. Clash of Clans. Clash of Clans is a free to play mobile game where you can create and customize your own village, make the most intricate and overpowered base possible, create your armies to go on the offensive and crush your enemies, or join up with your friends or people you meet throughout the game and join a clan to take part in massive clan battles as well as now a clan base. The game is constantly evolving with new heroes, strategies, creatures, and buildings. So join today, download the game from the link in the description or use this QR code to get it for free right now. And make for yourself the most overpowered build in the game. Just like we're gonna hop back to what should be the most overpowered class in the game, the Death Knights. Okay, so let's hop right into the most glaring questions people are gonna have. Frost versus Unholy in Ulduar. I will talk about every single fight, which one does more, but Frost is easier to gear early on to be very powerful and kind of near that threshold of its top tier of power and then unholy is very gear reliant on a lot of that hard mode loot so it will take a little more time but unholy does ramp up a lot more than frost does that being said both of these specs and play styles are extremely fun play whatever you like and if you play well you can usually outplay either of the specs so player over spec right now at least. One lesser known thing is you have to do hard modes if you want to parse. Warcraft Logs actually partitions it so that every single hard mode parse, for the most part, is always going to be higher than a normal mode parse. I also should mention I've been doing a lot of raid leading for friends, members of the YouTube channel and patrons on Patreon that actually I go into Discord while you are doing the raid and just help you figure out what's going wrong when dealing with some of the hard modes. So if you're struggling at all there, definitely let me know or reach out and hopefully we can hop in and fix it because so far every single guild I've hopped in there with has been able to just pump and blast and they've gotten every single one of those hard modes down that they've been wanting for weeks. I do have one quick warning. Parsing this phase is really gear dependent, more so for Unholy, but even still for Frost. The gear that we got because of the eye level buffs with Ulwar going up to the hard mode 252 is ridiculously powerful and you feel it very quickly. In particular, something like Comet's Trail can be insanely powerful when used correctly on a Death Knight. So do know if you're missing a lot of that gear, it definitely is hurting you and that's potentially not your own fault. On to simming, Sims did actually enable now an option for the desync rotation. All you need to do is go into the cog wheel and enable it. That might have piqued your interest. What is desync? And desyncing is essentially desyncing your blood and death runes to be able to get extra obliterates out every 10 to 15 seconds. This almost removes blood strike completely from your rotation, but your triple obliterates will use one of those death runes as well as one of the normal runes and then move through all of the runes. I will have a full guide on it coming soon. And if you want more information, you can actually check out the Fonzis Discord, which I have linked in the description. And also Fonzis' next action week or a guide that we've talked about multiple times on the channel. We'll always try to put you in a desync rotation. And when you resync your runes, it'll actually automatically adjust knowing your rotation is now back in a normal synced rotation. So if you want to learn more about that, or if you want to pump, that guide is phenomenal. Frost subspecs. You should probably almost always be frost blood subspec right now this phase it is really nice when you have to change targets even if your sims are showing you as frost unholy doing slightly more dps that is usually before you enter into desync rotation which should bring it up to being the same as well as if you have to change targets if there's any sort of cleave frost blood is amazing so i'd probably suggest almost everybody staying frost blood but there are some times where you might get a higher parse if you were frost unholy also there is a phenomenal analyzer you can get for the Google Chrome app that will break down your own fight. Now for openers, they do change depending on if you have runic power as well as do you have death runes, all of that. 
But essentially, I do have two guides going over the ideal cold openers, but most guilds probably don't have cold openers on most of the fights anymore. So I'm not gonna break that down too much in today's video, but you can, again, check out those videos in the description or hopefully up there. For each of these bosses, you'll see which spec is doing more DPS on average in the top 100s of that fight. And if there's anything else like pre-pots and things like that, I will have it mentioned on the screen here as well. As Frost, you might want to pre-pot armor on the trash so that when you do summon your army of the dead right before the pull, it does gain from that extra attack power. The only damage to the adds that matters is the killing blow. None of the rest of it goes towards your parse, but if you're unholy, it is actually nice to spread your diseases because it'll proc Wandering Plague, which will actually increase your single target DPS on the boss itself as those Wandering Plagues kind of blow up and hit the boss. Make sure you're using AMS whenever he does the knock up. This will just give you free runic power and increase your DPS. Use whatever you can to make sure your gargoyle doesn't get silenced here. If it does get silenced by that knockup, you're actually gonna have like 10 seconds of downtime in your gargoyles just meleeing. It will fully ruin your Gary parse, so watch out for that. If you do get put into the slag pot, your parse is over, to be honest. You still can do some ranged abilities to hit the boss, but your parse in itself is gonna be kind of screwed, so just, it's RNG, it happens. Straight down to Razor Scale, only the damage to the boss itself counts. And because of this, we are looking to parse here, guys. One thing that's very important is to stock up on resources before the boss comes down. Make sure you have all of your runes ready when the boss comes down. And also try not to proc any of your major ICDs. Greatness proccing on the last hit of a mob right before the boss flies down is a massive waste in damage. If you're unholy, refresh bone shield in this time. It'll just make sure it stays up. One thing you can actually do to help you do more damage is is position yourself right in front of the boss before it does its knockback, the 50% transition. This will knock you forward where the tank is probably standing as well so that the boss will run towards you. It just slightly increases your uptime on the boss instead of getting knocked away and then having to rocket boot in all the way towards the boss. Make sure to refresh diseases before the knockback because if you drop diseases, you're screwed. You can hop into the fire with AMS to get full runic power and pump damage into the boss. XC hard mode has changed and it's phenomenal for parsing a very fun fight. You do want to know when your guild is going to be using Bloodlust. You probably won't get two gargoyles on this fight anymore, especially if you're really trying to parse. But if your guild does kill it a little bit slower, do know you'll probably actually get two gargoyles. All of the damage to the adds fully counts, so make sure you are cleaving, putting up diseases on the adds. Also, that'll help with Wandering Plague again on the boss itself. The damage to the heart is pretty significant. Make sure debuffs go up right away and use whatever CDs you have to really pump during this phase. If you're unholy and you were summoning your gargoyle for the heart, I would suggest summoning it slightly early and then attacking it on the heart because it won't have full uptime if you actually summon it once the heart kind of comes down. Anti-magic shell when you're near a spark can be used to just increase your damage. And a lot of people don't know that you should always have your pets on the side of of whatever your melee is stacking on. If you have issues with that and your pet is on the other side of the boss, just recall your pet to yourself and send it again when you're on the correct side. That will fix the issue. Same thing for hunters or warlocks. It just fixes it right there. For unholy parses, you would prefer to bloodlust the heart. It does have a highest chance of increasing your damage the most. And for frost, you actually don't mind if you bloodlust there or if you bloodlust late or if you bloodlust early. It actually doesn't have that much of a difference on getting one of those top parses. As frost, you'll definitely want to save your empowered rune weapon to burst the heart and make sure you play desync rotation when you're back on the boss because you'll be reapplying your diseases anyways. Assembly of iron. Focus on being buffed as much as possible and having as much uptime on the boss as possible. If your guild has to pause to wait for a new death rune, this is essentially the death of parsing nowadays. Try to have all of these adds stacked because spreading diseases again can increase your single target damage from Wandering Plague. You can snapshot your diseases within the runes, so if you see a double rune, going for that can be a little bit of extra damage. This is one of the fights where tank positioning can be massive for your damage. You always want to follow the tank and the boss never run away like if you're spreading to spread death runes. That's generally not your job as melee. It's more of a thing for range and hope that your tanks do a really good job of keeping the bosses within melee range when you're in a death rune. For Kologarn, cleaving on the little adds does nothing for your parses, but cleaving on the two arms obviously does only if that arm dies. And most people don't know this, but his hitbox is in the same place for both of the arms and his actual body. So what you want to do is just de 
DPS the body, and whenever you're switching to the left or right arm, just turn slightly and you don't even have to move. Ariaiaia. This is one of the first bosses where you might want to change your glyph as well as your sigil. The PvP attack power sigil from phase one is phenomenal for this AoE situation, and glyph of icy touch can also be really big if you are unholy. The cleave completely counts on the first add, so you want to be pumping as much damage as possible into all of them. And then the damage to the feral defender, whenever that spawns, also counts. So make sure you're spreading diseases when those spawn as well. But the little tiny adds mean nothing. As unholy, definitely pre pot strength here. A lot of damage can be added by doing that. And as Frost, try to get Army of the Dead rolling early. If you could with an armor pot, that would be nice so that you can use a speed pot early in the fight. Getting full fear here can completely ruin your boss damage. You can get something like a fear ward, or if your priest is a giga gamer, they can hit mass dispel the second the actual fear goes out. For Unholy, most of the highest parses are staying in Unholy Presence all the way until at least after Bloodlust ends. And when you do get an open GCD, then you can swap to blood. Hold ya, hold ya, hold ya, guys. Try to get buff. That is the name of the game. Stay in the haste buff as long as you can. If you can get the crit buff, that's also phenomenal. This is a really cheesy fight for parsing, and I'm not sure if it's even gonna remain on the like overall parses forever. I think Workout Vlogs did a poll about that. If you're unholy, summon your gargoyle while you're in haste. Always be purely sitting in the haste buff whenever your gargoyle is up. The biggest Garys here are doing something like 78 to 80 casts, and that's over 420,000 damage from one cast. This is huge for you guys is make sure you're hasted up the yin yang this means you obviously don't want to bloodlust early until everything is fully set up well gargo also benefits from the singe debuff on the boss so make sure that's always at 25 that's not really your job if you really want to pump you'll try to align your dark moon card greatness and your comet trail or whatever other cds you have with your gargoyle. This means maybe swapping trinkets positioning right as you're about to pull. This will trigger the equip ICD of your trinkets, which can be really, really useful here. It's also something I haven't mentioned before, but if you had something like Comet's Trail, you would be swapping it off and on about 15 seconds before the fight every single time. Also make sure to army while you're inside of a beam so they have that extra haste buff when they're summoned. Unholy Decays will pre-pot haste only if you're using Bloodlust one minute into the fight, which would be kind of ideal getting your Bloodlust to actually go off when everybody has their second potion. So if you really want to pump, that is the best strategy for doing more damage. Also, a little bit of cheeky extra damage can be used from something like a sapper, because again, spell damage is really nice here. Thorum can be a little bit similar to Razor Scale in the sense that you don't want to proc any of your big ICDs like Greatness before you actually start fighting the boss. You also want to pull RP in if you can make sure you have death runes available. I made a video about the cheese strat where you can get 20% extra haste. Well, it actually stacks three times, so 60% extra haste. If you're not doing this, you're not going to parse. But I also think Warcraft Vlogs might be banning this very soon, so that would be pretty nice. So you might not have to worry about it. But for now, if you are not doing the cheese strat, then you are not going to parse. It's impossible. You won't win. People have 60% extra haste the entire fight. So good luck. Also no, of course, only damage to Thorum counts, so damage to any of the adds during phase one means nothing. Freya is another AoE fight. We're going back to that PvP attack power sigil and glyph of icy touch. Damage to the boss only counts if she hasn't healed to full since you've done that damage. This means there's no point in pumping the boss right as you pull it. A lot of people go in and instantly start attacking. It can be nice to get diseases up, but what this does is proc your trinkets so that by the time she summons her first ad wave, you no longer have that trinket. It's just a waste don't do it but there are times when it's nice to keep diseases up especially if you're frost you can keep diseases up on the boss so that you can instantly spread them with one pestilence and one global as soon as she summons any of the ad phases army of the dead can be used to actually minimize a little bit of your raids damage from the detonating lashers but most people don't know this army will then follow the boss after you do any sort of knockback so have your tank run the boss away from the rest of the raid because if the lashers get knocked back they're going to be taunted by army but they're going to run towards the boss pretty much every time. 
Just run the boss a little away from the raid and it'll make things extremely safe. Even Frost likes to use Death and Decay and Blood Boils on the little small lashers. AoE damage is king here, and if you want to parse nowadays, you're gonna eventually have to burn Freya. You're not actually gonna end up killing all of the ad phases, but when you get your second Ancient Conservator, you're gonna switch directly to DPSing the boss. Make sure there's a Mortal Strike effect on the boss, use Bloodlust, and just pump it down. Here, you want to keep cleaving because that damage does actually still count towards your parse, but what matters more is killing the boss earlier, which just juices up your damage. Or Mastery and things like that can be used on your Gargoyle to make sure they don't get silenced from the AoE silence on Freya, or else your Gary will again just be meleeing, and that is a huge DPS loss. This is a two Gargoyle fight, so use it early and then use it again with less later on, and make sure not to forget to use anything like engineering items for extra AoE damage. For Mimiron, you want to utilize the time in between the phases as best as you can. Maybe this means you're switching presence, summoning Army of the Dead in between phase 1 and phase 2. And the fight's long, so you want to make sure to pre-pot as well as use your CDs early, like Empowered Rune Weapon and of course Gargoyle. If you're designated to kiting in phase 3, your parse is gonna suffer significantly. Try to make sure you're spreading some damage, dropping death and decay on the adds in phase three while the boss is in the air, as well as you can jump when you pestilence in this phase and it should reach the boss while it's flying in the air. So just try to get as much extra damage out as you can and keep pumping. Then when the boss is brought down, use whatever you have to do extra damage to it when it's taking extra damage. And then in phase three, cleave is the name of the game. Big howling blast, spreading your diseases, death and decay, all of this is huge huge for adding extra damage. This also means you're definitely going to want to save sappers for phase three, but here's where you're going to pump. Watch out because when the boss spins in phase two, it can actually hit your gargoyle, fully killing your gargoyle if you just summoned it, and make sure you're dumping runic power and using AMS to either soak some mines or eat a little bit of the fire damage to just soak up some juicy slurp. General Vesax sucks. This is my least favorite fight. You're making sure you're not missing an interrupt and you have a 20% haste debuff at all times, but that's hurting you a lot, especially if you're unholy. So Frost seems like a good pick for this fight. Gargoyle early because you will get it back, and do know that logs stop at 5% on the boss because we're getting to 5% at probably around one to two minutes before the Serum Knight Animus even spawns, but Warcraft logs did see a little bit of a fix here by stopping tracking damage past 5%. So keep pumping until you hit exactly right below 5%. As Frost, make sure to empower the rune weapon early because you will get a second usage out of it for two bursts. I would always suggest having a focus macro to interrupt so you never have to stop DPSing the ad when it spawns to target the boss to get your interrupts out. Save AMS for the Serenite Animus and use it whenever you have something like above 20 plus stacks to reduce your damage and increase your damage. Yogg Saron is a very fun fight and insanely fun towards the end if you are getting to do a ton of cleave. Yogg Zero is where you will get the highest parses. If you're doing just Yogg One, still, then your guild is missing out on getting those huge 99s most likely, but Yog zero is actually not that hard with our gear. Things to keep in mind for this fight is Frost can pre-pot armor. You do want to use all of your cooldowns very early because they will also be usable by the time you even get into the brain room. Damage to all of the adds counts, especially in the last phase if you have the adds being immortal, so make sure you're always spreading your diseases and dropping death and decay. If you're Frost, having a mouse over howling blast macro can be really nice for juicing up a little bit of extra damage. Gargle on the first set of adds and make sure you're using AMS and Icebound to take a little bit of less damage when you're dealing with these. I like swapping to Unholy Presence if I'm waiting for the portals because it'll make you move quicker in the brain room and killing the adds and moving onto the brain itself quicker is always going to increase your damage. You can also switch to Swiftness of Zanza and then back to Flask to increase your movement speed. This is a little bit of extra damage but everything counts. To get through phase one quicker if your guild is comfortable with it you're probably triggering a ton of these actual clouds instead of trying to avoid all of them, it actually just makes it so you can kill the boss faster and getting through this phase will always increase your damage. Do know that in the last phase on Yogg Zero, when the adds run back into the group, they probably have no threat on the tank on them yet. So be a little bit aware, they will one shot you at full HP, there's no doubt about it. You do need to watch out on doing some of the AoE at this point if your tanks aren't ready to pick them all up. 
Lastly, we have Algalon, potentially the cheesiest fight in this raid, but an incredibly fun one. And I do want everyone to know that if you have low parses on this fight, a huge part of that can be that there's so few logs on this fight actually being killed that if one person has done more damage than you and you've done even 300 less DPS, that can be a huge difference for parsing because so few people have killed it. So don't worry too much. As more people get this down, it'll be way easier to get 99s. But from there, let's dive right in. AMS on collab stars or cosmic smashes is amazing. Both of them fully fill up your RP to full. So use it often and dump your RP all the time. But do know it will stop you from entering into a black hole. Uptime on this boss is huge. Never have any time when you're running away from the boss. So if melee are too spread out, just mark someone and have them all stack. As an holy, it can actually be nice if your tank is tanking the living constellations on top of the melee because direct damage to them doesn't count, but spreading your diseases and wandering plague will increase your DPS to Algalon. This fight in itself is all about awareness, knowing when a star is going to explode as well as where the cosmic smashes are and where you can position to continue DPSing. This means when a big bang is going out and if the black hole is close to you, you can stay for a little bit to do a little bit of extra damage and always make sure to refresh your diseases before you run into that black hole. Inside the Shadow Realm is a really good time to refresh things like Bone Shield or change presences if you have to. Try to make sure you DD on the tank itself because spreading diseases and cleaving to the collapsing stars can really mess up the timers here. So it does help you for your own parse, but this fight is more about getting the kill right now for most people. And if you offset the timers for the star killer, you are screwing your raid. The first time you trigger the boss every ID, you won't be able to pre-pot as unholy. As Frost, you could do an armor pot, but there's a long RP where you're in combat as unholy, so don't worry about that. It does get shorter if it's not that first time, so you can pre-pot strength. Gargoyle early because it's a long fight and you'll get a second one. Gargoyle again late in the fight, usually because if there's no collapsing star, Big Bang or Cosmic Smash, nothing is actually going to kill your Gargoyle. As Unholy, it would be ideal to Army of the Dead in Bloodlust in your opener, but most likely you're going to have to save it until Phase 2 because it makes Phase 2 a lot easier as the army taunts all of the adds. But in Phase 2, make sure you're cleaving. Cleave a ton of damage, spread your diseases, death and decay on the ground. All of this will increase your single target DPS and all of it counts towards your parse. This is where things get super cheesy is sometimes when there's AOE situations, some guilds hold off on letting everybody cleave and only one person does a ridiculous amount of AOE damage. This makes it kind of hard to parse against guilds that are doing that. So just know that your cleave damage does help you at the end and it does increase your single target damage on Algalon himself. I do want to give a huge shout out to Fonzis who helped me with this guy. Also know his next action guide for Frost and Unholy is completely dynamic. It will tell what's going on in every situation, and it's not just a rotation guide. It will actually help you parse, so feel free to check that out. Again, link in the description and link to his Discord in the description. And Death Knights are one of the strongest classes in this phase still, even after the changes we had. So enjoy the class, enjoy the phase, and thank you everybody who's shown support to this channel. Thank you for the 50,000 subscribers, as well as thank you everyone who's joined the Patreon or the channel memberships. Thank you again to Clash of Clans for sponsoring this video. And again, you can download the game for free in the link in the description as well as in the pinned comment.